So in today's video, uh, I am going to be reviewing and telling you all about the hats on Galatian. Sweet. Show you the gun, tell you the good, tell you the tell bad. Tell you what I did to get it to shoot more consistent using a regulator and uh, which regulator I've used. So let me, let me just dive right into it. Let me just tell you right now that it comes in a nice case right here. Um, pretty nice, four locks opens up we have a really nice gun it is a little bit heavy so if you're an individual who um, doesn't like holding a hefty gun this is not for you it's very very comfortable uh, beautiful to to shoulder but again it's heavy um, but it's gorgeous to look at feels comfortable in your hand um, yeah, I'm attracted to it. Very comfortable, adjustable cheek plate, uh, cheek piece here. Very nice. I think anyone can get comfortable with this particular gun. The butt pad is adjustable. It does have a side cocking lever and it can be, it has a safety right here. Push it forward with your finger. Let me show you what that looks like. It's very simple. There's the safety right here. All right. You can decock the gun, hold the cocking arm, press it, push it forward. That's it, it's decocked. It does have an anti-double uh, uh, feeding system in here, which is very, very nice. Has a Picatinny and a Weaver rail. Has both, right now I have it set on the Weaver rail. Uh, it's a little tricky, but it works. It does have a detachable air tube slide it out gun air tube now the air tube is probably one of the heavier parts on this gun uh, the breech is heavy yes once you remove the air tube this gun is very very manageable this is pretty easy to hold with one hand uh, very easy to shoulder and maneuver. Once you add the tube, you're now adding like two, two and a half pounds with air um, to a gun that's already about 10 pounds. So right now with the scope, this is about nine or 10 pounds. When you add this in, you're talking about 12, 13 pounds. So it is a heavy gun. Um, but even though it's heavy, it is comfortable to hold. It's very adjustable, like I said, with the shoulder is up and down adjustable. The butt pit, the, the cheek uh, piece is adjustable up and down. So it, it is very comfortable. I do love the side cocking lever. The trigger is nice, not the greatest trigger, but it is nice. Uh, it is adjustable. I have adjusted it uh, a little bit down both the first and second stage. Um, so you can kind of feel it. Uh, it does have weaver rails on the front. Uh, I don't plan to use them. I have removed, it does come with a with a uh, shoulder strap. I have the piece on the bottom here attached. Let's see, I have it attached right there to the, I haven't used this, by the way, I haven't used the uh, strap. I'm not a hunter, so this hasn't, this has only been sitting on a bench rest on a bag. Let me tell you a little bit about efficiency. So this particular gun is a hog. It is not efficient at all. The first part of making this more efficient, what I did do is to plug five of the six holes. That hole right there is the air port and that gray matter that you see right inside there, that is JB Weld. I have put JB Weld in there to plug up. There were six holes going around. There's a channel that goes all around where that gray matter is. And I'll, I'll post a picture, I'll post a picture so that you can see what the original uh, valve looked like. So the, here it is. I drilled out the port to 0.19 of an inch. I made it slightly larger and I did close up the other holes. So now, this is a quite a bit more efficient, especially in 22. 
I understand in 25 you need a little more air. You're screwing it in and turning it, it doesn't know, I guess at the factory they wouldn't know where to end up to make sure the port on this tube when screwed into the gun, into the breech, lines up perfectly with the transfer port at the top of the bat at the bottom of the barrel. So you may, I'll show you on this camera here, you may turn it, as you can see I'm turning, let's say this, this top represents where the port, where the barrel, uh, the transfer port would go into the barrel. If it's turned just a little bit off, now you see it's going in, in this direction here instead of straight up and down. Let me point myself towards the camera. So if the transfer port isn't straight up and down, and let's say it's turned to the side, it won't be sending air straight up into the barrel. It would be sending it, well, it would be blocked inside, inside the breech. So this transfer port has to be directly north and south, up and down. If it's off to the side shooting air out of one side or another, it's not gonna be efficient. So uh, what I had to do was figure out where the top, once screwed in, once screwed into the breech completely, which hole matches the transfer port, and then uh, mark it, then drill it, make it a little larger, and close up the rest of the holes. Now sometimes you won't get lucky. I got lucky, and one of the five of the six holes actually lined up perfectly, almost perfectly, with the transfer port in the barrel, so I was able to just drill a little bit to one side to make it fit perfectly. So now when I screw this tube into the breech, it will line up perfectly up and down and go right into, into the barrel, uh, the barrel's transfer port. So that is the first issue. The second issue is I needed to change this valve. Well, this is filled with air. You know what, I'm going to remove the air from this tube so that I can show you what the valve looks like. In order to remove the air, now you don't want to knock on this, that's kind of dangerous, you want to be very careful. I ha they do include this nifty little uh, degasser kit, has a nut on the top, you want to make sure the nut is backed out. So what happens is it screws on to the valve. Then what you do, there's a little hole there, that's where the air is going to be expelled. Use an Allen key that's supplied. Gently get to that point. Now you're going to hear the air come out. It's going to right here. You want to point that that hole away from your face, you and you want to check to make sure before you try to unscrew the valve from the tube. Make sure all the air is out of there. I still hear it, so it's not done. All right, it's done. Now you can back it out. Unscrew the nifty little uh, degasser tool, and then we'll unscrew the valve from. Now, the one thing you'll note there was an O ring in here. That O ring has been removed, and I put it away in a safe spot. That O ring was around the edge here to keep the air in. But you don't need this O-ring, why? Because I'm using a regulator. The Audrius regulator that I purchased on eBay for, I think it's 70 bucks. That's what you're seeing inside there. I'm gonna pull the regulator out in a minute. Here is the valve. Here is the regulator. All right, okay. so in order, first thing we do, I'll, I will take apart the valve and show you what is inside this valve. But before I do that, let me take out the, the regulator, the Audrius regulator. I have a, I believe this is a 3 16 nut. It's pretty long. That will screw, I'm gonna place it inside. Let's see if I can get you to see it. I'm gonna place it inside, screw it in, into the regulator. There's a little hole in the regulator. We can grab it, pull it forward, but you know what? I'm going to use my old Robo Grip from the 90s. Grab it and pull. There we go. Nice and gentle. There is the regulator. I'm going to unscrew that little nut. So this is an Audrius regulator. It is it is pretty good. 
Um, Yuma might be a little better, uh, but it's been consistent. Uh, again, I'll take you through some numbers so that you can see what this regulator has done uh, for this gun. But it definitely has regulated it, brought it down, tamed. This is a very powerful gun and the regulator will bring the power down and give you more shots and consistent shots. So the regulator is very simple. It has an O-ring on the outside, okay? And it has a second O-ring around the edge. So when you place your regulator into the air tube, you, you will place it with this end for The open end is gonna be towards uh, here, I don't know if you see me putting it in, but that would go in there, and then the valve would butt up against it. This O-ring here would make a connection with this and create a seal. So this is how it sits in your tube. Yes, regulator and valve. Butt up against each other and into the tube. Why don't I show you what's inside of the valve? It's a very simple valve like any valve. Uh, there's this little port right here, has holes in it. I created a tool from a pair of uh, needle nose pliers. I ground down the tips so that they're nice and pointy. They fit inside the holes, hold your regulator, and turn clockwise. I just broke the seal, keep turning, keep turning, and very simple. There's the cap, okay. There's a spring, sits on top of the cap, and that's pretty much it. Now, what happens is you press on this part, and right now it's still closed because I put a second spring. Let's see if you can see this. I put a second spring between the end and the brass. There's a spring in there because I did change the original valve spring, that's this one here, that was inside here, and I put a stronger one, you need a stronger valve spring if you decrease the pressure in the tube. So because I put a regulator and I decreased the pressure from 300, let's say, excuse me, 200 bar uh, down to 130 bar, which is what I have it regged at now, you have less pressure pushing against the valve, uh, the, op the pin that opens the valve, so you can have, you're gonna need more pressure against it to close it quickly so that it saves air. So when your hammer hits the valve and opens up, it's gonna stay open longer if you don't have a stronger valve spring. So besides having the stronger valve spring, I added an additional spring right in there. Again, I hope you can see that right in there so that it's even tighter. So right now, this valve inside there is staying closed because I have a second spring there. This valve pin comes out with a flathead screwdriver on the inside, okay? And a small wrench, there's actually a nut right there. So we're gonna attach the wrench to it. And like any tool, counterclockwise, we'll open it up. Be gentle, you don't wanna damage anything. Loctite on it so that it keeps it from coming apart. There we go. So there is the small nut. Okay. This black piece also, you still need to put the, fill, uh, the flathead screwdriver in there to hold it and then turn counterclockwise. It, it is threaded in. There it goes. There it comes off. And there is a tiny spring on the valve pin. I think you see that. And then the last part, just tap on that, and out comes the valve pin. Let's see, out comes the valve pin, there you go. So the valve pin is inside, now inside there is hollow. As you can see, it's just a little tiny hole, and that's how it all goes together. So I have now shown you uh, the modification to the valve with the five of the six holes being plugged, some JB Weld in there, um, the, the, the addition of a uh, spring at the top part here, as well as much stronger uh, spring on the inside of the valve, uh, the Audrius regulator, 
Uh, very simple, it is adjustable by spinning this knob here. Okay, if you see the threads right here, and then there's a little mark that I've made that tells me where the 130 bar mark is. If you spin it counterclockwise, you get more pressure. If you spin it clockwise, you get less pressure. I think it goes from 110 to like 160 or may, somewhere in that range. Um, so this is the, the regulator. I'll show you how we put this together. Just drop it inside very gently. Now I use a little bit of silicone grease around the edge, just a little bit. You don't need too much and never use anything but silicone grease. I'm gonna drop it in there very gently. And I'm going to press it in very gently. Just apply constant pressure until it passes that little ridge. There it goes. As you can see here, just push it in just up to the threads. So I'm just pushing it right into the threads. Then with the, the valve, we're going to push in. Remember, it butts up against this smooth brass edge right here. So this valve, the smooth edge, will butt up against the regulator. Drop it in. Start screwing clockwise. And if you'll note, right, this o-ring that came from the factory in this position here we remove that because we need the regulator to breathe screw it down and that will push the regulator in as you screw the valve into the tube the regulator will make its way in and one thing to do is you, once you use a regulator you want that regulator to breathe so do not go all the way just leave it open about a half a millimeter Right about, I don't know if you can see, let's see. There's just a small little gap between the, reg, uh, the, the valve and the tube. There you have the modification to the tube. Now nothing's been done to the gun, just the tube. As far as the gun goes, the only thing we've done with the gun is to remove. Now, if you remove this cheek rest, the plate underneath. So you have a six millimeter hex screw that screws right into the breech. And then this whole back butt uh, stock comes off and that gives you access to the hammer screw. Um, what, and, and tension, the, the, the hammer uh, spring and the, the tension uh, guide. There's a, there's a nut in there that you turn. If you turn clockwise, backs it out, therefore creates more pressure or clockwise pushes the pin further in, releasing the pressure on the spring and giving you less pressure. So what I have done, uh, or what I did, was to lock the uh, nut because it kept moving. Uh, I guess too much adjustment made it loose. I put a little bit of blue Loctite, not the red one because that's too solid, a little bit of blue Loctite to keep it in place. And what I'm doing now is using spacers like these here. Let me show you what these look like. These are way too big. So I have, in now inside the, in front of the spring is a spacer. And now it's about this side. This is a 3 16 spacer. They have a 1 quarter inch spacer. So I'm using, I made a bunch of various spacers. I have uh, 132, 116, uh, 1 8 and 3 16 So by having these spacers, I can adjust the tension of the spring by just placing a spacer in front of the spring, but behind the nut. And what that does is it allows me to give more or less tension without adjusting the, the nut. Because if you keep turning that nut back and forth, eventually, it's, or at least I found that it, it loosened up and it, every time you shoot, the vibration would move the nut, so it would change the spring's tension. So right now I have it blue Loctite in place using space. So if I want uh, less tension, I'll just use, I'll take out the spacers altogether or just use less spacer. If I want more tension, well, I could just add a spacer and it works just fine. Um, so that's pretty much it on the Galatian. So the last topic uh, that I wanted to cover with you regarding uh, the Galatian uh, and the balance between power and efficiency uh, is 
where I wanted this gun shooting. So originally I thought I would want this gun shooting 18 grain air arms about 915 and a 21 grain Barracuda match, H&M um, Barracuda match around 865. I did have it there. Uh, it did, it was more efficient, it was giving me more shots. Uh, but when I took it out to the range, I wasn't so happy at the 100 yard mark. Felt like I needed a little bit more power. So uh, you're gonna see three shot strings coming up. The first is where I had the valve and hammer spring tuned a little lighter, giving me more shots but less power. So again, uh, the uh, 18 grain, 915, the 21 grain, about 865. The next two shots, uh, the next two strings, after the first string that you'll see in a moment, uh, I increased the hammer spring and decreased the valve spring a little to get a little more power. And I got it shooting exactly where I wanted. The uh, 18 grains are going about 927, 930. And the uh, more importantly, this is what I usually want to shoot out of this Galatian, and this is what the Galatian likes a lot, is the H&N uh, Barracuda Match 21 grain, which it's shooting at about 875, 880. Uh, so I did achieve that, and you will see that going forward uh, in just a few moments. So obviously there's a balance between uh, power and number of shots. So when I had it a little lighter, shooting a little slower, I was getting 27 really good shots with about a 31 extreme spread. Uh, now that I have it shooting uh, a little hotter, the either way, whether you're talking about an 18 grain or 21 grain pellet, um, we're getting about 25 shots with that same kind of spread. So we did lose a few shots, but you got more power. Again, this gun is adjustable. Shots. But I just don't think that it makes a difference between 24, 25, and 27, 28. You know, four shots, I'd rather have a little more power. Um, and you may agree, you may disagree, but either way, you can, uh, you can make an adjustment the way you like. Uh, it's a great gun. Uh, it does have its flaws. The flaws are that it is a hard gun to shoot, meaning when you press, when you squeeze that trigger, the violence in the in the breech is a lot. It is more than, I have a caliber gun Cricket. Um, it shoots a 34 grain pellet, 870 feet per second. And you don't even, you don't shoot, you can hand hold it, shoot. This is very hard to keep steady. It has some violence to it, um, but it is a nice gun. It does shoot well if you know how to shoot it on the bench. You do need a tight uh, grip. You need to keep this against your shoulder, your cheek firmly planted, and breathe and take your time. I mean, that's with any shooting, but with this gun in particular, you really need to concentrate on your shots if you wanna have some consistent shooting. Let me summarize the good and bad. The good, it is very comfortable. It is quite adjustable. It has a side cocking lever. It is powerful. It is accurate. Um, it's great to look at. It's gorgeous. The the the, the negative points. It's a bit. It's a it's a bit of a air hog. Um, again, I have uh, remedied that by plugging up the holes, making it a little more efficient. It is heavy, and when you squeeze that trigger. You really have to be concentrating because there is a bit of jolt going on. Uh, but again, the positives outweigh the negatives and this is an excellent gun overall. Uh, Here we go. Shot one. Twenty 
27 and 28. 28 shots, looks like from 920 to 883. I'm gonna do a shot string of this gun that you just saw a few minutes ago being um, reducing the hammer tension. Uh, this is now shooting the 21 grains about 880 feet per second. I've got it exactly where I want. So I'll be shooting the H&N uh, Barracuda Match 21 grain. I do have the tube filled to 205 bar. All right. Here we go, 18 grains, uh, air arms, Diabolo field target. We're filled at 205 bar and we're regulated. Hopefully. Two skips. And that it comes with two uh, magazines and they are very nicely made. Um, I know some people have had issues with the magazines. You do have to seat the pellet in all the way so that it doesn't get clipped. But otherwise, I mean, that's not hard to do. Once It's like any gun, every gun's got its quirks. Um, this is not an issue at all. I mean, again, just I can do it blindly, know that it's, it's in there, but it is nice and it does store the second uh, magazine inside the butt on the bottom of the right here on the bottom of the uh, stock and it is quiet it is relatively quiet for how powerful it is it is it is shrouded um, the shroud does come off for cleaning very simple let me show you what that looks like just turn counterclockwise all right turn counterclockwise and gently slide it out makes cleaning this barrel very, very easy, okay? So here, and this is, by the way, this is the carbine version. It is shorter. I know the the non-shrouded version, ha is a, the barrel's a little longer, has a little, about 100 feet, per, has a little more power, but you know what? I wouldn't trade the quietness uh, for the longer barrel. It does come apart if you unscrew, put this down a moment, if you unscrew the tip here, here, let me show you what that looks like. That's the front cap. There are some baffles in there. There's two of these with some cotton. Very, very easy to clean that as well. So with all that being said, um, take a look at some shooting, actual shooting of this gun. This is shooting a 21 grain H&N at 21 H&N at approximately 880 feet per second. End up uh, with testing the accuracy at 50 first, and I'll go to 100. So this is the first time I'm actually shooting. It is a wonderfully warm day. Uh, four mile an hour wind, gust. That's It's a beautiful day. No excuses. If this gun doesn't perform today, it's not me. <laughs> or maybe it is me. It's the gun. It's not the, it's not the weather. All right.
shooting 100 yards. Wow, shot very far left. So he needs to come to the right. Let's try that again, top left. Little breeze right now. <laughs> the other way. Uh, this particular gun is for sale, uh, comes with everything from the manufacturer, um, the original spring. If you don't like the gun regulated, you want it unregulated, you can easily put it all back uh, to regulate. I can put it back for you as well. Just head back the O-ring and take out the regulator. Um, if you do want it unregulated, what I did do, I had it, I had this baby bottle brush inside the air tube to as a dep acting as a depinger works just fine so if you want it unregulated and you want it shooting uh a 21 green pellet i don't know 960 feet per second which i think is what it was doing or an 18 grain over a thousand feet per second um, you can do that just add back the uh you know add back the <laughs> the baby bottle brush, um, put in a spacer uh, to increase the hammer tension, and you're back to, you know, as almost, even maybe a little more efficient than it came from the factory. Has everything original, uh, it does not include the scope, the scope is mine, um, you don't want, this is a cheap scope anyway, it's my particular cheap scope. Um, but it has everything, comes with all the springs and parts and all of that, so if you're interested, um, just let me know in the, uh, in the posting, first come, first serve, whoever posts first. I will give that person the opportunity, uh, if you're interested, to purchase this particular gun. Um, again, nothing wrong with the gun, it's just not for me. It's uh, a bit of a heavy gun, it's a, uh, uh, a bit of a violent gun, you know, has a little bit, but if you're looking for a Galatian, uh, almost new condition, again, there's only little marks on the, the screw, the, the air tube, th there's nothing on the metal, all, the, all that is pretty much good. This has never been out hunting hasn't been in the woods. I've only taken it uh, out on the bag at the range and uh, I don't see any serious scratches or I don't see any scratches, not serious. I don't see any scratches. Um, I have taken this gun apart, oh God, 50 times. Uh, everything is in order. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you.